Good morning and welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. My name is Ed Yeager and I'm the family pastor here. And, and before we begin this morning, I do have a few announcements I wanted to share with you. Uh, first of all, um, this is our last week of having two services, okay? Beginning next Sunday, we will have one service at 10 a.m. that will be here in person. We will also stream it online through Facebook and through our website. So uh, please make a note of that. That's a, that's a change from what we're doing right now. And so 10 a.m. next week, we look forward to seeing everybody uh, either here or online. So um, also, um, for those of you that are here worshiping with us, on your tables, there are the pages from our connection books. We would love for you to fill those out so we could have a record of your visit, but also there's an opportunity for you to share prayer requests with us, and uh, you, can, you can fill those out, and those are uh, distributed on Wednesday through our email, but also the staff gets those, so it gives us an opportunity to pray with you and let us know what's going on with your life and how we can uh, best serve you. Um, another big announcement coming up is our fifth grade students that are going into sixth grade here in the fall. We are doing a crossover event because they are crossing over from children's ministry to youth ministry, and we are going to go take them on a zipline adventure at our district campgrounds. Uh, Pastor Audrey and myself are, uh, are going to brave the craziness of the day and take these kids along with all of our middle schoolers to this event. So if you have a fifth grader that's moving into sixth grade or a middle schooler, we invite you to attend, okay? If you want a little more information about that, if you will contact Audrey Ann, she will make sure you have all the information you need so your kids can participate in this event with us. Um, also, Wednesday night, Pastor Jeremy and I will be on Facebook Live at 6.30. We are continuing our study in the book of James. This is a, a great opportunity to, uh, to just kind of tune in and watch and have discussion with Pastor Jeremy and myself as we spend some time in this really great book of the Bible. And uh, so you'll want to be a part of that. And then finally, as we worship today, um, uh, we will not be uh, receiving tithes and offerings here. Um, if you're in the room, you can drop those in the bucket on your way out. If you are watching us uh, online, there are a couple different ways to give. Uh, first of all, if you can give through a, a texting, the number's there on the screen. Uh, you can text the word give there, but also you can give through our website. And uh, we just want to say thank you for your faithfulness. You as a church have been so faithful. And throughout this season, we have continued to offer ministry, continue to do things to serve our community. And that only happens through your faithfulness and giving. So we as a staff just want to thank you for all of your faithfulness through this season. So we just are appreciative of you and everything that you guys have done. Well, as we begin, I'd ask you to stand as we worship this morning. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to be here today. So just want to ask you to join with us and sing, and let's just worship our King. You know, for he is good, and he is so worthy of our praise. Amen. Stick is the king of the earth. Heaven 
worship. Worship him today. I will worship you. Lord, we give you our praise. I will worship you. Yes, I do. I will worship you. As one voice will sing it. good God. Let's just sing this song and worship and honor to him. He is worthy.
Is there a greater vision of grace? And in a moment, we shall be changed. Yes, in a moment, we shall be changed. In, in this time of prayer, I just encourage you to find a, a posture that allows you to, to listen to God this morning, whether it be at your seat here at the table, if you're at home, wherever it be, I just encourage you to listen to the things that God is calling you to do. Share your burdens with our Lord this morning. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your mighty works. We thank you for the promise that you have given us that one day we will be with you. Lord, I just thank you for that. I thank you for the love that you have for us, that you want relationship with us, that you really want to spend eternity with us. Lord, I just am overwhelmed by that. Lord, today as we worship and as, as we're here praising your name, we're, we're also reminded of the many burdens that, that we carry, Lord. Today we were reminded of, of the, the many prayer needs that we have in the church. Some of our people that are suffering, they're experiencing loss. Lord, I just pray for those. Lord, you know the request. You know the, the many things that are, that are burdening us. You know where healing needs to take place. You know where comfort is needed. You know where those needs are. Lord, and I just ask this morning as, as we're here and lifting up your name that, that you would go to those that need comfort. Help them to not feel alone. Help them to sense your presence. Help them to receive your peace. Lord, for our families that, that just need a touch, Lord, I just pray that you would provide the healing where it's needed, whether it be physical or spiritual, Lord. I just pray that wherever it is, whatever it is, is needed, that you're there. Lord, I continue to pray for our world, our nation, our state, and our government. Lord, I just pray that you would continue to, to guide our leaders as they're making decisions. I, I pray for those that are that are serving in our communities, Lord, that you would continue to grant them, them help. And Lord, I lift up our families today, the families of our church that are that are struggling with what it means to be a parent, a grandparent, an extended family member. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to be the kind of people that you'd want us to be so that the, as we would interact with those in our world, that they would sense your presence and your love, that we would be a beacon of hope and a light into a world that so desperately needs you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be that kind of person that would always point back to you. And Lord, help us to be the kind of church that you'd want us to be. Help us to be the kind of church that points back to you as well, Lord, that, that the things that would happen in this place wouldn't be something that gives us glory, but it gives glory to you for all the mighty works that you've done. We just thank you. We thank you for the things you've done, the things you're continuing to do, and the things that you will be doing in the future, Lord. And we pray all of these things in the words of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Forgive us today our daily bread and forgive our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In your name, amen. So Jacob, verse 20, it says, over her tomb, the dead thing, he set up a pillar. He didn't deny the pain of the loss. Jacob set up a pillar, and to this day, that pillar marks Rachel's tomb. It'll never be the same again, because it says in verse 20 that Jacob buried Rachel. But it says in verse 21, Israel moved on. Israel. Back, back to 20, back to 20. Jacob set up a pillar, 21, but Israel moved on. That's the new you. Come on, that's the part of you that abuse couldn't destroy, that neglect couldn't negate, that hard times couldn't break, that people couldn't steal, that the devil couldn't take away, that trouble couldn't change. It said Israel moved on. He moved on. It's time for you, Israel, for you, child of God, to move on. Move on. Come on, you got to get Simeon and Reuben and Leah and the rest and Benjamin and Joseph and stop focusing on what you lost and move on with what you got left. Is anybody in this church moving on today? Amen. Will you stand back with us as we sing?
Let worship turn into revival. Lord, lead us back to you. Oh, so come. justice flow up like a river. Let worship turn into to live out the words and the truth of those words, Lord. I, I just pray that, that our hearts would be stirred for revival, that our hearts would be stirred for change, that our hearts would be stirred for, what, stirred for whatever it is that you want to do with us this morning. Lord, that we wouldn't just live in a, in a constant uh, um, state of, it, of, of, of just pure uh, jumping around, just moving, but Lord, we'd be in a state of just a, a wonder and awe of you and passion for you and your kingdom. Lord, that our movement might be meaningful, that, that we might live out the words that you're teaching us. And so, Father, I pray today for revival. I pray that it would start in me and it would start in us. And, and Lord, that, that we as believers, we as the church, would just be prepared for what you have in store for us today. Father, I just, I love you. I thank you. I pray that you would just use whatever words that you have for us this morning to penetrate the hearts and minds of those that are listening that we would be more than hearers, that we'd be doers. And, uh, Lord, we'd, we'd live out what it means to be Christian in this world today. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Those of you that aren't already, well, thank you for uh, showing up this morning. Thanks for choosing to participate with us today. Uh, this is, I know, <clears throat> we know that you have lots of options. We know that there's churches all over town. There's computers all over homes, and there's places that you can use to, to, to be uh, instead of here this morning. There's just something beautiful about being in the house of the Lord together, amen? Just something that stirs us together as, uh, as believers, that just being together, just our presence together and our relationship and who we are and, and, uh, and what our intentions are, worshiping together live and in person just makes a difference. And so we just, uh, we thank you guys for choosing to be a part. And uh, we thank you, Facebook Live, for showing up this morning as well. Uh, we know that you've got way more options than these people have this morning in the room. You can be, you can be uh, on Amazon this morning shopping for a new dress. But you chose to be with us and to worship with us today. So thank you. Uh, thank you for, for choosing to be in the house of the Lord this morning, whether 
you're in this facility or you're with us, you're joining us online. Um, I, uh, this is our third week in the series, and, uh, and good thing, good news doesn't run out, amen? Good news never runs out. There's, there's a plethora of good news, and it's amazing in the day we live in that you can, you can kind of, this question has been posed to me several times, and I, and I don't know how to answer it always, but, but it's, uh, do you think that, that bad or evil or, or, or those kind of things, do you think that they're more prevalent or they have more power and authority over good things? And sometimes in our world, you know, you kind of you kind of go, well, it seems like it. It seems like bad and evil and, and those like negative things seem to have like a bigger impact. It seems like their voices are louder. It seems like those things get posted, those things get 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 put out there, those things th- my reactions and, and the ways that I respond to things, it seems like good it always takes a back seat to bad. And and uh, and I gotta tell you this morning that good, that God is good. And God takes the back seat to nobody. And so the good news that we get to talk about, the news of who Christ is, the good news of, of him being a, a, of, of salvation coming through Christ, the good news that he is the Son of God, those, the good news that we're going to talk about today, the gospel of peace, that God is peace, that Christ came for all, that we might uh, experience his peace and we might experience him in a brand new way. And, and uh, God is good, and so good does not take a back seat to bad and to evil. I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday about this very subject, and it seems like it's just the intentions of, uh, it's, it's maybe just our perspective that oftentimes gives us the outlet that, or the idea that bad outweighs good, but it doesn't. We are people who have hope. We are people who live by this very, this, this very understanding and this, this scripture's and uh, by this good news, and so our lives represent good news. Amen? Amen. Hey, it's just, a, it's just an intimate crowd this morning, and, uh, and I'm just going to invite you and ask you would you, just, would you just help me this morning? Would you just participate in a way that, uh, not for my sake, but for your sake, would you just, some of these seasons come and go, and, and I know next week we're going to be in two, or one service, which is going to put a few more people in the room. And, uh, and there's something beautiful about the intimacy of a small group. And I would ask you, would you just help me this morning? Would you just pray that the Lord would help me, would help you this morning to engage in a way that would make a difference in your life? I pray for you in the same way. Well, I'm recap kind of where we've been. Uh, we've been traveling through Acts in this good news series. Week one, we talked about uh, preach Jesus to them. That's a, that's a foundational piece of who we are as Christian people. The good news, the good the gospel is uh, our, our, um, our response to, to, to the bad in the world, to the negative in the world, to, um, to, to, to the, maybe the disheartened uh, folks in the world, the hopelessness in the world. Our responsibility as Christian people is to preach Jesus, preach hope, preach encouragement, preach joy, preach Jesus, uh, love, uh, preach, preach him to everyone around us. Then we began to talk about the truth of, of uh, who, who Jesus is as the Son of God. We, we, uh, we went through the proofs of the Scriptures and talked about Scripture. Uh, we proved who he was through the Scriptures, through the truths of the Scriptures. And then we, we, our responsibility to proclaim it, that he is the Son of God and a truth and a foundational piece of our, of our doctrine as Christian people. Uh, he is the Son of God. And this week, we're just going to continue in our series uh, through Acts, the Good News series, uh, that Jesus is this, the gospel of peace. Uh, proclaim peace. This is, a, this is a, it's just funny how these things just kind of, kind of wind out. It's just interesting to me how the Lord works these things out. And uh, in a time in our, in our world where we seem like we're just in turmoil all the time and, and uh, it doesn't even have to be the big um, headliner stuff that's in the news, it just can be anything in our own personal worlds. And it's just we're constantly dealing with and struggling with uh, with with being in constant disruption of relationship with people. It seems like there's always disharmony. It seems like there's always uh, conflict or there's always some kind of, uh, just some kind of walls or something that we put up as human beings. And, and, uh, and preaching peace, it seems like, is always a timely response to a broken world. But right now specifically, it's a great idea. It's a great concept. It's a, it's a wonderful concept message for us as Christian people. So church, uh, today's this, it's a message for us. It's an opportunity for us as, as Christian people. It's an opportunity for us as the church to understand how important it is, the gospel 
of peace. Would you stand with me this morning as we uh, read through Acts chapter 10, beginning at 34. Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. But in every nation, the man who fears him and does what is, is, uh, is right is welcome to him. The word which he sent to the sons of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know the thing which took place throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee, after the baptism which John proclaimed. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, and God was with them. We are witnesses of all these things. He did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. God raised him up on the third day and granted that he became visible. Not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen beforehand by God. That is, to us who ate and drank with him after, after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach to the people and solemnly to testify that this is the one who has been appointed by God as a judge of the living and the dead. Of him, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who were listening to the message. All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. Then Peter answered, surely no one can refuse the water of those of these to be baptized who receive the Holy Spirit just as we did, can he? And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay on for a few days. Thank you very much. You may be seated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I want to try to, to set this up today. I want to give you a little bit of backstory and, and help you understand um, why Peter's standing, why Peter's preaching, why he's proclaiming uh, at this point, how he even got to this city. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, story. And so I don't know if you, many of you heard the story of, of Cornelius' vision and, and, uh, and Peter's vision. Uh, this, is, this is a man named Cornelius. He's a Gentile. He's an, he's an Italian uh, a cohort. He's, he's, a, he's a devout man, and he's, he's got a good... Um, he, he's kind of got a good reputation with the Jews, and he kind of practices the religion and the Jew, uh, of, of Judaism, and and uh, and so he's he's doing everything he can to make sure that he's a godly man, and he's he's falling in line with with what it is to be godly and to follow the rules, and to and to make sure that he's in a good position to be successful, and and he's I, in all intents and purposes, I think he's interested in religion. Things. I think he's interested in godly things. I think he really wants to know who God is, which is why an angel of the Lord comes to Cornelius, and, and he, he, he shares with him that there's a man named Simon in Joppa that I want you to send for. His name is, is, is Peter, and I want you to bring Peter back here so that he can talk to you about some things. And so, so this devout man, Cornelius, who uh, who understood who God was, who was practicing Judaism, who was, who was generous uh, to, to Jews and to, the, and to Judaism and to the temple and giving and all these kind of things. He, he's, uh, he just gets this vision from an angel or from the Lord, and, and, uh, and he sends for a man that he's never met in his life, that he's never heard of, but he wants, he, he wants to know the vision. He wants to know the revelation. He wants to understand what it is that God is, is asking of him. So Cornelius sends some men to Peter's house. The interesting thing is Peter's having a vision at the same time. It's, it's, uh, it's just amazing to me. And if you'll just listen to what's not being said today, if, the Lord will just, if you'll just let the Lord listen or share with you and speak to you and help you understand, you'll hear so much more than what I can possibly say. So Cornelius is having, is having uh, this, this vision. He's having this, this, uh, this message that's been sent to him, and, and he's, he's looking for, for answers, and he's looking for God, and he's seeking God, and he's doing everything he can. Uh, God sends his messenger to, to Cornelius, and then Cornelius sends messengers to Peter, and, and they're looking for a man they've never met before, and so they get to Peter's house, and just oddly enough, Peter has a vision also. It's an interesting vision. It's an interesting situation that he's in, and he goes into this what Scripture calls a trance, and he's, he's kind of in this place where the Lord's really shown him some things, and, and the Lord says, go up on the roof, and, and I, as they're preparing food down below, go up on the roof, and, and Peter begins to have this vision, and, and the Lord brings before him some really weird things that, that, uh, 
that we would think is odd and we would think is weird. And Peter begins to get really hungry, and we don't think that's weird. We understand that. But Peter begins to get hungry, and, and the Lord brings a vision before him, and it shows uh, uh, hooved animals uh, it, right before him, and, and he's like, kill them and eat them. And Peter's like, no, you know I can't kill those kind of animals. They're unclean. I don't practice that kind of thing. And you know that, that unclean animals, and if you know anything about Jewish tradition and, and some of the culture that I'm talking about, you know that they don't eat pork and they don't eat so these unclean animals. It's, a, it's an important piece of, of understanding this. And Peter is rejecting that, like, no, Lord, I can't eat that. I won't let unclean things pass through my mouth and through my lips. and into my, I won't let that happen. And, and the Lord begins to share with him that what I have cleansed no longer consider unholy. And so Peter's having this experience all by himself up on top of the roof, and he's, he's having this experience with Jesus, and, and, uh, and, and, and he doesn't have any idea that Cornelius, who's also had an experience with Jesus, who's, who, who's, who angels of the Lord have, have shown themselves to Cornelius, and, 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 and as Cornelius is trying to seek God and find out who he is and really pour his life into understanding this, this religion and, this, and who God is, so you can just see this, like, God is just playing matchmaker, you can just see what's happening here. God is, is moving through Cornelius. He sends people to find Peter who's standing on a roof, and uh, I bet this was just an odd scene. Can you just imagine these guys showing up, and you got Peter in a trance somewhere, and he's dreaming about four-legged hooved animals, and he's having this conversation with God about, about well, I can't eat unclean animals. I'm, I, I'm a Jew. I don't eat unclean things, and I can't pass through, and I can't do that. And, and God is training him and teaching him for the conversation he's about to have. Isn't that the beautiful thing about who God is? He gives us and equips us and teaches us beforehand the conversations and the ideas and the instructions that he wants us to follow. Are you with me? Are you getting this? All right, do you, do, does this make sense to you? Cornelius, in a whole other city, a Gentile Italian man, it says, it's, it's, he's, he's, he's trying, to, he's trying to, to worship God. He's trying to understand God, and God comes to him. He shows himself to him, reveals himself to him, and he's a Gentile, which Gentiles and Jews would have no interaction. They would, this wouldn't have been normal. And so he's, he's, uh, he's, even though he's, he's a prosperous man and, and he's a part of this, this, uh, this cohort, he's, he's, he has this vision and he sends for Peter. And Peter also is having this experience with God that's teaching him and preparing him for a conversation that he's fixing to have. And all Peter can think about is, I can't eat unclean meat, God. That's not a part of what I do. That's, you, you know that. You kind of set those rules up. You should understand I don't have these, I don't have these interactions. I don't do these kind of things. I'm, I keep the law, and, and I'm not going to do these things. And the second time God talked to me, says, man, what I've made clean, what I call clean. When I clean something, it's clean. It's no longer considered unholy, and you can have it, and you can eat it, and, and you can do these things. And the God who made it unclean made it clean. Isn't that cool? So the conversation's taking place, and before you know it, Peter and Cornelius are together. And I just think this is such an incredible interaction, and Peter himself says before uh, this verse, in verse 28, he, he, he talks to Cornelius, and he says, he says uh, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a man who is a Jew to associate with a foreigner or to visit him, and yet God has shown me that I should not call a man unholy or unclean. This is, this is the crux idea in this whole passage. This is a piece of Scripture that is so important for us to understand, that, that, that we, need to, we need to key into this and understand this passage as we move into the, uh, to the passage I just read to you from verse 34 on. This is a piece of the passage that, that, uh, that really marks uh, the difference and the change in Peter's life and, and marks the desire and the, and the change in Cornelius' life and the, desi- and the desire and the want to, to know God and to understand him in a way and, and his heart and his life is open to understanding. And what you don't understand yet is Cornelius uh, needed to hear. He understood who God was and, and, and he, he wanted to please God in every way and he was doing everything he could to make sure that, that, that he could do that. Even verse 2, if you go all the way back to verse 2 in chapter 10, a devout man, one who feared God with all his household and gave many alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. You begin to see the guy's life. I mean, he's a godly man. Cornelius needed to hear the way of salvation by a human messenger. God, in his provenient grace and his goodness, showed 
up to Cornelius in his desire and his, and, and his seeking out of, of who God is and his, and his, uh, his fearing God and, and his praying to God continually. His prayers were heard. And God responded to him. And I just find that just fascinating that Cornelius was a devout man who feared God. Church, this is something we need to listen to this morning. A devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually, but he lacked something really important. He lacked something that, that God was beginning to show him, that God had sent people to him so that he would know who he was. Cornelius understood who God was. He was devout, and he, under, he knew God, and he prayed to God, and his prayers were heard by God, and, but he lacked one thing, and God began to put things in motion. It just so happens he began to put things in motion with somebody that he shouldn't even been with. Isn't that phenomenal? Let me get to the point. This is where we pick up with Peter. Opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. But in every nation, the man who fears him and does what is right is welcome to him. The word which he sent to the sons of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Here's the part that I, this is, this is, this is the sermon. This is what I want you to hear this morning. This is the significant piece. This is, this is where we really begin to see who God is, that, that we really begin to understand that God is not a God of partiality, that God, want, God wants everyone and calls everyone to his name, and he's using his people to break barriers. He's using his people to show, uh, to show the world who he is, and, and, and God, God doesn't care what you look like, where you came from, if you were supposed to be there, if you're not supposed to be there, if, if, uh, if, you have, if you're healthy, if you're unhealthy, if whatever state you're in, God is a God of impartiality, and he wants you, uh, he wants you to be a part of his life. The word which he sent through the sons of Israel, through the people who, who uh, the, the the people who were called by God, called God's sons, and you can either call those the prophets. You can you can recognize that as as uh, as as people who just are obedient, people who gave themselves to Jesus in obedience, <clears throat> whatever, however you want to define that. They began preaching peace through Jesus Christ. Do you recognize what the peace of Christ does? when we really just understand. This is why this is good news. This is why the gospel of peace, this is why uh, understanding that proclaiming peace through Christ is so important for us. Peace makes such a difference. There's, a, uh, there's an illustration I, I, to maybe make this a little more practical and easy to understand, and this helped me. Uh, but uh, the, the idea, the understanding of peace is kind of a, it's not a complicated one. It's a really easy one to understand. If, there, if there's peace, it bas- essentially means harmony, right? It means Equality. It basically means there's no disruption in, in relationship, and there's there's everyone's kind of living in in a in a good and healthy way. And uh, Scripture defines peace, and this specific word, um, it, this Greek word that that is peace, uh, is is an interesting word that that uh, that I think will help us to understand exactly what this is. So so this kind of peace, this this uh, this word means to join or bind together something that was separated. And so you can look at this book and you can understand like. This has a binding on it, right? Uh, this is not a joke. It's not a trick. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do any kind of tricks up here. This is a book that has a binding on it, and and as practical as this is, and yet you'll understand and I understand. Without this binding, it would just be thousands of pages that would just fly all over the place. Thousands of pages that would just have to be picked up and have to be picked out, and and without the binding, without something that keeps this book together, it's. It's, it, it would be easy to scatter it everywhere, amen? I mean, you can understand that. You get that analogy. You get that understanding. But because of the binding, it's, it's all held together under one, um, under one uh, uh, unified front. Does that make sense? There's, it's what joins and binds this book together. That's why they call it a binding, right? That's a joke. It'll come later. You'll get it. Uh, watch this later on Facebook, and, and we'll get that one. This, it's called a binding, and, and it binds, it joins or binds things together that were once separated. Are you starting to see how the gospel of peace makes a difference for people in their lives? Are you beginning to see, or maybe you've already seen and you already understand, that, that the gospel of peace reconciles relationship between God and man? That's a beautiful part of who Christ is. The word which he sent through the sons 
of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He's Lord of all. It's the, it's the peace that reconciles God and man. It's, it's what bind us, binds us together, those things that are separated. It's, it's, it means uh, it's kind of where the phrase came from. Uh, this word, this understanding is where the phrase comes from. We have it all together. Because with peace, there's prosperity, there's health, there's well-being. There's freedom, both inward freedom and outward freedom from disturbance. This is what Cornelius is beginning to experience. This is what Peter, uh, someone who's been church, someone who, who spent time with Jesus, I think the miraculous thing, more than the story of Cornelius coming to Jesus, is Peter opening his mind that somebody else can receive the gospel and can, and can be baptized in the faith of Jesus Christ who's not a Jew. Whew. That's good news. Church, this is something that we need to listen to today. This is something that we need to hear for ourselves today, that, that the change, the greatest change, in my opinion, now the greatest miracle is always someone coming to Jesus. I don't want to dispute that. I don't want to make that any kind of unclear or muddy at all. Uh, the, the miracle of Cornelius giving his life to Jesus and surrender and understanding who Christ is and, and salvation comes through Christ Cornelius's life was changed forever, and the other Gentiles that were there, their lives were changed forever. This is, this is an incredible story. But for us today, this is where I really want to focus. This is where I really want us to understand. Church, I'm speaking to you today. I'm speaking to you who, have, who, who understand who Christ is. I'm, I'm speaking to you uh, who, who have been in the room, who have, who have participated with us, who have accepted Jesus into their life, who, have, who, who, who go to church, who, who read their Bibles, who, those, those who call themselves believers. I'm talking to you today because the greatest thing that I'm seeing in this passage for us today is the fact that Peter's perspective was changed. Peter began to see things differently Peter began to see through the, through the, the vision and the revelation of, of God himself that, hey, whatever I make clean is clean. Whatever I call you to, whatever I, the mission and, the, and, the, and, and the, the responsibility that I call you to, I'm calling it to you, and it, it's a it's holy mission. And, and whatever, uh, it's no longer considered unholy. It's a holy thing. And, and because of this interaction, because God spoke to Peter directly, because Peter began to go, wow, I now understand. Cornelius, I shouldn't even be at your house. I shouldn't be here. The, the walls, the, the walls that, that, that were put up and the framework and the legalism and all the things that were put up uh, for, for Jews aren't even supposed to hang out with foreigners. We're not supposed to be together. We're not supposed to be interacting. And here God puts us together in this beautiful place so that our lives can be changed. Amen. That's good. I mean, that's downright good preaching. I, that God has put us together through all the walls. He broke down everything for us to be together, the gospel of peace. When Jesus is Lord of all, when Jesus is Lord of our lives, when, when, we, when we submit and surrender to his kingdom and his lordship, all walls break down. Isn't that beautiful? All walls break down. The gospel of peace. Cornelius needed to hear the way of salvation. Peter needed to understand God's impartiality. God is the God of peace and reconciliation and harmony. I think this is an incredible story for us today, church. I think this is an incredible place for us to be this morning as we try to understand a world that's fallen and broken and people who are different than us. And even in our room, in this space in here, uh, we're, we're different and we hold different uh, maybe values or perspectives or ideas and thoughts and all these kind of things. And we have a beautiful message where Christ is Lord of all of us, where Christ is, is Lord of my life, all of my plans and all of my desires and all of my, the things that I think are important to me become, uh, become not even secondary but way down the list. Understanding God is a God of impartiality and the, and the mission of God, uh, uh, it, it, it separates, uh, well, it, it, it moves through things that we think are immovable. It helps bring things together and bind things that we think are impossible. There's no way I can be friends with them. There's no way I could, I, I literally heard this one day swimming in a pool. I thought this was interesting. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know if, I shouldn't even say that. I'm not even going to say that. It's not, it's not going online, all right? We can edit this out. God moves through 
in ways that just absolutely breaks down walls. And church, I'm asking you today, asking you today, I, I pray that the Lord will speak to you today and to me, he already has been, that he'll open our minds and he'll open our hearts and he'll help us to understand that he is Lord of all, that he'll help us understand that he, that he is our king, that, he, that we're under his lordship and under his, and under his uh, uh, authority. And, and because of that, because of that, we can do things in his name that are greater than we ever thought we could. I'm just so impressed. I'm just so impressed with the idea that Peter's going, wow, Lord, you mean this is for them too? You mean that, you mean that, that I, can, I can go to this man's house and, and I can move through all the legalism and I can, I can be criticized if I, if I want to be, because, or, or not because I want to be, but I can be, I'll be criticized now for sharing the gospel with those who don't look like me. And, and, and now that those who we thought were unholy, those who we thought were, were, uh, were second rate, those who we thought didn't deserve this message, those who, thought, who we thought uh, just shouldn't be a part of this, you mean now those people also are included? You mean now that, that now that Cornelius and those that, that, that were unholy and those who didn't have the chance and those who were rejected and those who weren't the message wasn't for, they can, they can have hope through the message and your Godhead or your, your, your Lordship has brought me to this place to understand. You're not a God of impartiality. You're a God of absolute peace. A condition of freedom from disturbance, whether outwardly as of a nation from war enemies, or inwardly as the current context within the soul, which is the context in this passage. You mean you're giving me freedom from having to choose tradition and the way we've always done it? You're helping me move through that to just being obedient to you and sharing you in any context in any way possible? He is. Jay, I want to ask you if you'd come back this morning. And we're going to sing an old classic. Great song. And I would love for us to respond in a way today that just would help us understand, is there, is there something that's keeping us out of harmony with somebody else? Is there something in my life, is there something in your life that's keeping you out of harmony and out of, out of uh, uh, having it all together, is there something that's keeping you from completely experiencing the goodness and the hope and the peace that Jesus Christ offers this morning just because you won't move out of your tradition? Oh, God, I can't do that. I, I, by no means, Lord, for I've never eaten anything unholy and unclean. Lord, I've never gone there before. I've never done that before. I've never said that before. I, I can't imagine crossing the line. I can't imagine going to places that, that, uh, that are just inappropriate. I can't imagine going into that place to even share you. I just can't even imagine that. And you keep me away from those things. And God has to tell him again. I mean, this is pretty serious. Like, but, Peter, uh, but a voice came to him again. Get up, Peter, and kill and eat. Is God telling you, get up. Go do the things I'm telling you to do get up. I'm not impartial, God. I want you to break from, from the things that you think are so significant. What I've cleaned is no longer considered unholy. Does this make sense today? Can you live this out today? Would you just stand with me this morning as we respond, as we sing? Father, would you help us today to understand what exactly it is that you're saying to us as a church? Lord, I'm so passionate about this message. I pray that my passion and my words never get in the way of what you're doing. I pray that you would help me, Lord, today to get out of my comfort zone, that you'd help me, Jesus, to, uh, to recognize the things in my life that maybe I'm partial to, that this is my tradition, this is what I do, this is my routine, this is what I do every single day, whatever that may be. 
you help me be more vocal about your kingdom? Would you help me to be responsive to your voice? Help us, Lord, to fall under your lordship today and to break through barriers for your kingdom. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you remain standing while we sing? the first things that you said this morning was God takes a backseat to nobody. And I thought that was so good and kind of set the tone for the whole sermon this morning. Um, and it started to remind me of the quote that, that God doesn't qual- call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Um, and that just kind of sat with me this morning as he continued to preach. And, um, and the fact that God broke down everything for us to be together the fact that God broke down the little things that aren't kingdom issues just so that we could be together. Um, and so I pray that this morning um, that we can go forth and be able to be in harmony with one another and thus in harmony with God because God broke down those little things and those little things that aren't kingdom issues and those little things um, no longer will take a back seat to God. Um, and so this morning, um, I thank you for being here. Facebook Live, thank you for joining in with us. I hope that you have a great day. Church, we are so glad you're here.